Hello. Hello. We're here in the great outdoors with a pair of fireplaces. And today's little job is to restore them to their former glory. I'll just give you a close up of what's going on. And the reason we're outside, actually I should probably mention, is the first thing we're going to do is shot blast them and get them all lovely and clean. So we've got here two different fireplaces and similar era I think. This one might be slightly earlier. This one's probably, I'm guessing, a William IV sort of era, so early 1800s. Um, this one, like I say, probably a bit earlier than that. This is the sort of a very fancy grate that you would find in a living room, a sort of centrepiece of the living room, probably inside a big marble fireplace. This would have been up in a bedroom and this sort of thing would probably never be lit. What tends to happen when these are pulled out of houses and they're yanked out of the fireplace by some oath of a builder, the plates that are supposed to be here get destroyed because obviously they're being crowbarred out. So there's supposed to be a cast iron plate sat on here which is embedded into the stonework of the fireplace, the actual surround. Now on both this one and this one, those plates were destroyed and I don't think they even were any even with it. So what I did was made up a, a pattern, a casting pattern out of MDF and we sent that off and it's come back here as these brand new plates. So for convenience I just made one pattern that's going to cover both the plates. So what I'm going to do for instance with this one is cut it down the middle there and mount it so that it sits, this one I'll notch out this little bit, it'll sit there and the other half will sit like that. So the edging there is on the inside of the grate and of course this one much the same except this one overlaps that bit there so I'll go like that, be cut down the middle again and then this one goes here. Now obviously these are brand new um, I'm going to say adequately cast, <laughs> they're no better than that. They've got um, machining marks on them where they've been cleaned up by whoever did the casting. It's not really the way to go but I can rectify that by now blasting it and taking this shiny edge off. So I'll, I'll blast it which will sort of age it up a bit, make the whole thing look a bit more convincing. So that's why they're out here. Now this one you can see it's got paint on it. And this again indicates that this, this grate would have been in a bedroom and never used. Because obviously this, if you actually lit it, all this paint would start smoking and, and the whole room would stink. So this is how they tend to turn up. This is um, in decades of dust on here. Um, but again, very little corrosion. But then again, cast iron tends not to corrode if it's kept in any kind of sensible environment. So there's a few more features I want to point out about this particular fireplace. Uh, it's actually been restored once already by the looks of it and not very well. So, but what we'll do is we'll blast it, get it all cleaned up and then I'll point those bits out. It'll be more obvious at that point. See how sharply all this patterning comes up. I'll show you the um, bits that are questionable for whoever did this last. You can see here this has been restored using brand new fixings. So these are obviously metric and this one here is actually a nylock. So there's nothing authentic about that at all. Whereas if you see down here this is what you'd expect to find a fixing like this. So this is a hand threaded um, to the blacksmith that did this would have his own threading kit that he'd made. It's not to any actual kind of standard. Um, and then a handmade nut on the top, this big fat square nut. What I'm going to do is take these off and redo these with my own 
handmade nuts. So it will just look a lot better. The reason that's important, and you'd think this is the back of the grate where it can't be seen, but it's important because anyone who's actually in the know, the first thing they do when they look at one of these grates is tip it forward and see if it's been restored and if so, how nicely. So that's why it matters about the fixings here, even though they're not normally seen. Having said that, here we can see there's modern metric fixings on full view. So that's a, I mean, that really is a no-no. And then down here, we've even got a, a hex socket head. And then this, this is just a piece of mild steel angle line that someone's used as a bracket to, to put the, uh, the actual grate on. So again, all that needs to be sorted out properly. But nothing terrible. This one here has been dropped at some point. You can see there's a stress fracture there. Now I might weld that up, equally I might not. It's The thing is that these bedroom grates are not worth a great deal, so if I was to put say £400 worth of work into this and it only sells for £100 and obviously the, the chap who's commissioned me to do this won't be very happy. Having said that I may I may just weld that up and clean it back, it's not, a, it's not really a big deal. This is um, a stress fracture, so this is from it being dropped. So that's a relatively straightforward welding job. If something's damaged because it's been overheated many times, it's generally impossible to weld, but that's a whole, whole other subject. Next up then, we'll get this back to the workshop before, um, before it all goes rusty again. So we're back in the workshop. It's actually a couple of days later and already these are starting to rust. You should be able to see there that there is already rust coming through and that's just sat here in the workshop in dry weather. I don't think it's rained. No, it hasn't rained at all since <laughs> since doing the blasting. So the air's been quite dry and even so you can see a bit of rust coming through. So to reverse that issue and also to provide a modicum of protection for the future I'm going to go over the, the visible surfaces or what will be the visible surfaces when these are installed um, with this stuff. So this is a phosphoric acid based rust converter. Now these days I normally use straight phosphoric acid but I'm going to use this stuff in, on this occasion because it has a binder which will dry and I think that will give a little bit more protection. Um, reason being that these are probably going to go into a, well not damp, but not particularly dry either um, showroom for <laughs> potentially many years before they're actually sold. A little bit easier if I lay it down just to do these bits. So here's my tip of the day. If you're going to use this rust converter stuff, whichever brand it is, Decant it first, however much you're going to use, into a smaller container. In this case, this is just the top of a, of a spray can, actually. And then once you've used it, um, if there's anything left, chuck it away. Because you don't want it contaminating what's left in there. If, it goes, if this stuff um, goes from its current sort of milkyish white, if it goes pink, then it's, it's reacted and it's no good anymore. In. I suspect this will take two applications before I cover everything. Um, basically everything's going to go a dark purpley black and I'm not going to do the back so I'm not going to do any of the bits that won't be seen when it's installed. So this isn't a paint of course, this is just a, a well, it's, it's just a solution so it, it, it doesn't detract from the, uh, the decorations in any way at all. Now 
that will dry very rapidly well within the hour so all that chemical gets on and does its job of reacting with the iron I'm going to cut the plates down I will treat these as well but not just yet Normally when I'm laying out um, and I need to start drill something I'll um, use a centre punch but this is cast iron <laughs> so it should be fine but my preferred method for starting the holes in cast iron is with a little diddy cordless. See how these get on. So that's just one coat so far. You might not see bits like this. and catch them in the light. There's still a bit of a brown bit there, so that's the sort of area that I want to go over again. But for the most part, it's looking quite good. So if I put the camera there, you can see the contrast between the treated metal and the untreated metal. Just a couple of bits here and there. Missed. What would be best would be to put some studding into the bars here so that this bolt holds the front bars onto the side panel. So if I had some studding going through I could put a um, handmade nut on the back here, a square one, that would look alright. So if I can tap through with this, then I'll use um, an M10 stud. So I have no problem with using metric um, fixings. It's just got to look right. <laughs> On this little bedroom grate, it only came with one hob plate, this one here, and you can see it's 
quite badly damaged where this bit was sunk into the uh, what was probably stonework. And unlike on the big grate, this decorative edging here has been notched because the bar sits proud of the edge bit here. So that's how it went. And like I say, there was only one of them, the other one was missing completely. So what I did was just use a piece of MDF and my router table and you can see there that I've just routed out all of the inside here to leave this lip all the way round and I've made the one plate, as with the other grate, I've just made the one plate that uh, could be cut in half once it's cast and again that's just for ease of casting. So that was my pattern that I sent off and then this is the one that came back and you saw me chop in half. So now I've got to notch it out here and then I've got to make a hole in it just as I did on the other one for fixing to go here. Found this old um, clout floorboard nail, which will be just right. I'll cut it down somewhat. That's that. I've been digging through the scrap pile, and I found this piece of steel which already has some holes drilled and tapped in it, I've got no idea <laughs> what it was. But I think this will do for making the nuts. So this is something like 25 by 10, um, or inch by 3 eighths, I guess that is an old money. I'm just going to drill and tap some more holes, and then rather than cut it with a bandsaw or a grinder, I'm going to torch cut with the uh, oxypropane, slice them into roughly square shapes. That should make it rustic enough to be in keeping with the uh, fireplace. So every now and again I can feel it tighten up as I'm turning and then I go back a quarter turn and that just snaps off what I've actually cut through, if you see what I mean. So it breaks off these little shards. So it's worth remembering that the taps are very hard, which might sound obvious, but they're like um, drill bits and that they are very hard and therefore relatively brittle. It's quite easy with a handle with this much leverage on to actually snap the tap if it jams up.
coming along then, the little one. As you can see our uh, hob plate fitted as it's going to be. Uh, we'll <laughs> drop of the excess there of that stud. But by doing it this way round, um, it leaves the stud flush with the plate and it all looks neat. But this crack here, I've decided to try and weld up. I was going to leave it because it's not really structural and it's it's not terribly obvious looking at it. Um, but it's visible enough. I'm going to try and sort it out. So those of you who know anything about welding will know that welding cast iron is a <laughs> is a pain. It's, and it's a fairly perilous activity as well because it's very brittle cast iron which is how that brake came to be there in the first place. Somebody's obviously dropped this on its, on its front at some point. Not me, I hasten to add. The older the cast iron, the worse it is to work with, generally speaking. So what I'm going to do is clean this up the best I can um, from this side and then I'm going to weld it from this side using uh, nickeline rods in my little inverter arc welder. With cast iron it's all about the expansion and contraction of the metal so if I just merrily weld all this up it'll look great for a bit and then all will fall apart. <laughs> so I'm just going to do mm, no more than a third of this to begin with. gone that far then just that little bit I'll let that cool down basically until I can put my hand on it oh, we lost a bit of material off the edge there that's the last bit and join those two together. There we go. Now, if this was a more valuable grate, if, if the similar brake was on the other grate, which is worth probably ten times what this one is, I would do my best to make it perfect, but I'm always wary of the fact when you're doing work for somebody else, uh, time is money. <laughs> and so, yes, they're not going to want to pay me more than the grade is worth to repair it, if you see what I mean. But, yes, I'm happy with that. So now I can finish this one off. show you those studs have been cut down and then blended in So that's the stud that's screwed into these um, bars and then I'm going to do is just put the nut on so that the stud's just protruding. Like 
and then just do it up with a little giant screw. Yeah, just about make out. I'm going to cut the corner off, the corner off there, and then take this section out the middle. Some square head fixings here, and they're going to fix from underneath. So, this is this one. Yeah. Yep. There, good. Remains is putting these on. So I've got studding that I've cut down and the nuts. Instead of this sort of thing going on, these are the ones I've put, it, put in. Like I say, I am using metric fastenings in a sense, but it's a lot more subtle than it was. Let's see. This one here is original. So it's, what I've done is a lot more in keeping, I think. And then these bits of that plate that holds the grate on. And of course, that the same over here. And of course the whole thing now is way more solid than it was, so that's a vast improvement as well. The last thing to do really is to um, put on the graphite paste and, and um, buff these up. But before I do that I'm going to treat the plates and the fixings that I've put in with the same chemical that I've put on here, that rust converter. This stuff, the grate polish, this particular one is the spirit based one and that's important for a number of reasons and you're about to see the main one is that I can squeeze the whole tube into here because obviously as it comes out it's a paste and it's an absolute pain to do anything with so what I do is empty all the tube into there and then get some white spirit because of course that's what it's based on and then I dribble that in there and give it a good stir. Now it's a graphite containing solution which you can just paint on. And then once the spirits evaporated, um, you can buff it up. A 
It's been a couple of hours and all the volatiles have volatiled away and just left the graphite. So the last thing, last step, is to buff it up. And hopefully as I work up, you can see it go from a matte finish to a shiny one. But the nice thing about graphite, of course, it um, the highlights go silver and the low bits stay dark. So it's particularly effective when you've got an actual 3D uh, relief decoration like this. It really leaps out. amazing <laughs> and I'm not saying that's really anything to do with me let's just bring out the pattern and this is an exceptionally nice bit of casting this one in terms of the decoration and also the the way the casting has been done in that it really all that detail is there this would have been a carved wooden pattern originally um, but sometimes in the casting process much of the detail is lost and it sort of looks a bit almost out of focus but this is very crisp so it's not been a terribly exciting process getting these up together um, and I've not really demonstrated any great skill uh, during this video I'm, sh I'm sure but hopefully it's been an interesting a look at what I used to do in terms of restoration of old and knackered iron objects and it's been really satisfying actually to take these and then bring them back into serviceable items they are actually looking pretty much as good as they ever did and that's not bad considering that they're a couple of hundred years old this one in particular is really nice and I'm really happy to have brought it up to this standard Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.